Now, 2014 could be the... I'm busy pointing at Naz because she's just dived on the sofa from doing the ski report there, so she's out of breath as well as pointing <laughs> out, just in case you wonder. Now, 2014 is a new... We've got a new tourist destination, Space Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson's brand, of course, promising to be ready <laughs> for a blast-off soon. <laughs> 150 grand a ticket. It's not cheap, but do you know what? <laughs> I'd do it, given half a chance. Let's talk to technology expert and our regular Friday guru, Julia Hardy. Um, Tom, look, come on, it gets better, the title. It, I know, I'm, building, I'm building, I'm building it up every time. The the <laughs> look, there's, there's, there's actually a lot of pressure on Virgin Galactic, isn't there? Because there's, you know, we were expecting this several years ago with the initial time table. It's obviously taken longer than people yeah. were hoping for. Well, here's the thing. They're, they're trying a lot of new things with the technology that, that they're using. Um, they're having to jump through a, a lot more hoops because obviously it's a commercial flight that's going to have passengers. They're doing it in the right way, though. They're kind of taking things slowly and, and, and doing it safely. I mean, you'd much rather that than, hey, let's just chuck a rocket on it and off we go. Mm. They've got to take care, really. It's, it's a whole new sort of way of um, you know, getting up into the stratosphere, basically. So. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously safety is very crucial for, for companies, administrations like NASA. But with it being a commercial flight, it's, it's an entirely different oh, yeah. remit. It's basically, apparently, if you're an astronaut, they... Not that they... Uh... You know, don't, they're not reckless, but there are yeah. inherent risks. Yeah, but yeah. obviously, if you've just got normal, you know, you and I are going to go on it. They have to jump through a lot more, a lot more hoops. There's also a lot of testing as well. If you have, like, if you know, if you're just creating a new plane, it has to go through like maybe two years of testing to be ticked off and approved. Mm. And that's not with sort of all the new technology. I mean, look, at, you've seen pictures of it. It's a crazy design. This giant sort of like weird catamaran that drops another uh, little sort of smaller spaceship down, and then it sort of boosts up and goes up into the stratosphere. Uh, one of the things I was thinking, though, I mean, as it's quite a sort of expensive thing to do and you would think that you know if you're going to pay uh, 150,000 uh, pounds for a flight that I, I would expect like a foot rub some champagne <laughs> it's, it's not it's not going to be a hugely pleasant it'll be a, an amazing no. experience but it's not leisurely relaxing have some canapes would you like some caviar you're going to be going through like massive amounts of g-force yeah. And, and stuff have, like that. It's not, would it be part of the ticket that I presume that you'd have some sort of training before going into that yeah. atmosphere? Yeah. So, and what, what he was actually quite smart with some of the original sort of people who, who signed on. He's taken them to like Necker Island to like hang out nice, and train. Nice. Get, well, <laughs> apparently that's training. And uh, no, but they've sort of they've gone on training and they, you get to be part of like this group and you can go and see the test flights. It's quite it's quite clever business sense to do that. But yeah, it's it's quite it's, it's rigorous training. You have to be physically fit to be able to do it. A lot of people have paid up front. We know there's a lot of money in the pot, so there's that adds to the pressure to get this off the ground, quite literally. But it's an indication that the price is, Richard, maybe coming down ever so slightly? Uh, well, I think so. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to be the first ones yeah. to, to go on it. But I think actually it's supposed to be Richard Branson. He wants to take his two kids on it, yeah. uh, on the very, very first one, which is going to be interesting. I mean, he's going to make money off the fact that it's going to all be televised as well. Um, I think they're even going to do a competition to win tickets. So there is that option as well. But oh, it, will, it will come down in price. But it's not really like space space. space. No. There is it. They've just kind of gone up high enough so that you get your little sticker when you come down and it a handshake. Is, yeah, it is, yeah, it is sort of the very edge of space rather than actually going into space. But that would be an entirely different ball game, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's another one that I was reading up on the other day called the Worldview uh, Balloon, which kind of, it just sort of takes you up and then you just sort of slowly, gracefully come down over a sort of a few hours, I think it is. And um, you don't get weightlessness, but it's only $75,000, so that's cheap. You can afford it. Uh, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it, and what about anybody else getting us into orbit? Uh, uh, commercially, privately, because obviously whatever we think of this and however distant this is in terms of it being popular and yeah. common, we are heading in that direction. Well, I think, you know, um, you've got, obviously got, we've got Richard Branson and then obviously the kind of American equivalent is a guy called Elon Musk who uh, made a whole load of money uh, sort of being involved in PayPal in its original iteration. Now kind of works for Tesla Motors and uh, owns SpaceX, which is a commercial uh, uh, commercial space program. At the moment, they are using uh, older technologies, but they're, they're, it, it's not really for people just yet. But his vision is he wants to start, he's, he's been quoted as saying he would like to, you know, maybe start colonising Mars. That might be kind of fun. So that's kind of... <laughs> his uh, his uh, view but what I, I mean what I love most as much as everyone sort of poo poos uh, you know Richard Branson and, and oh he's crazy you know he's an eccentric and he's doing all this stuff you've got to have people like Elon Musk and you know Richard oh, Branson yeah. going out yeah, and yeah. doing it they push technology forward they inspire the general public to get excited about what the future could be and you, and you need to do that you, it's really important this is uh, we just saw those images just lost them SpaceX 
there. So there are all these different elements that are coming into line. And we forget, don't we, that we're a long way behind where we thought we'd be. The space shuttle was meant, we thought that was going to be, in effect, a, a sort of reusable mini bus to take us to and from, to and from the moon and 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, and it's just, it's Didn't just not, really, not really happening. But, you know, we all watch Tomorrow's World, and I feel that you know, we were lied to a little bit about the prospect <laughs> oh. of technology. Not a lot really happened. There was a lot of there was, there was a lot of optimism around what would happen. And we, it lost the momentum and lost a lot of the funding. But now with this, I mean, it is interesting. It's going from administration-funded projects to mm. to private funds, as you say, and those people with the the dosh, but yeah. the you know the the inspiration to try and get us well, up there. You know, I mean, as much as we talk about you know 150 thousand pounds is a lot of money, it's still an awful lot cheaper than all the other you know sort of private space tourists who paid you know millions and millions to go up to sort of space stations and stuff like that. So it is theoretical, even on your salary, Stephen. You know, you <laughs> could you know save up a couple of weeks so, and us. then you could go. Maybe you could do um, a press for a couple trip. of decades. Maybe there'll be a press trip. The press trip that count I me. I think in. I should get a free ticket. Just see so your forecast up there. Yeah. <laughs> Will you be able to see what's going on? Exactly. Like you're not relying on satellites. The interesting thing, of course, is you look at the amount of technologies that have been developed by NASA by getting into orbit. It affects actually everything that we do, all of us. Lovely, Julia. As always, a pleasure. We'll be back down uh, to Earth next week with uh, with more techie features. And don't forget, there's much more. Actually, Swipe is on air tonight, 7:45 and 8:45 here on Sky News, and it's online as well for you on Sky News for iPad.